And uh, yeah, uh, so hello everyone. It's been uh, quite some time. I've been a bit busy with my um, everyday work, but you know now I have a few, I guess um, a bit more than an hour of time um, free until I'm waiting for our servers to migrate to the new place and everything to get uh, fixed there. So let's live stream some uh, unit testing, right? Because that's the last thing that is actually left uh, before we wrap up the main part of the course. Let's put it this way. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we need to unit test our client because right now it doesn't really have any unit tests and my mouse just stopped working. Come on, mouse, come over here. All right, so um, what I'm thinking is I'm gonna use Jest for unit testing. I've tried using it uh, at the um, um, very early stages, let's say infancy of the React when it was just released and uh, the Jest was like a very new testing framework. It had some nice utility features for React specifically, but it wasn't very good. It was very slow. There was issues with um, non-React code, let's put it this way. And you know, in the end, I, we ended up, for example, at the time using um, Mocha with JS DOM because it was simply like, 10 times faster and you know JS DOM is like not the fastest thing ever. So, but now I think that Jest is like, I've read a lot of uh, good things about it and uh, there's like a ton of new articles like this one, for example, that explain you how to unit test uh, React with Jest and you know, it seems to be like a, a good, um, they, they did some very good progress on it. So let's give it a shot, right? Um, oh yeah, the another thing that I remember having tro troubles with is running Jest with Babel together, which was um, very, very problematic, let's put it this way. All right, so um, what do we need? We need to actually add it as a dev dependency at first. Let me, I guess, use this. Uh, I mean, okay, whatever, I can use this terminal as well. So it's fine, I think um, there shouldn't be any problems, right? So I've, um, I've actually looked at my previous live stream and saw that there was a lot of noises in there. And even though people were watching, nobody actually told me about that. So if you hear any problems or see any problems with my live stream, please do let me know. I can fix it right away. Uh, I tried to position the microphone now closer to myself so that you don't hear the keyboard clicking as much uh, as was in the previous live stream. But you know, let's see how it goes. All right, so we need to do what? We need to add um, yarn in development mode. We need to add Jest, right? So this is what we want. Right, and um, I think we can start with testing um, the uh, non-React bits first. I mean, because we have plenty of things. Oh, wait, is that, that's a... Uh, Client folder, right? Yeah, it is a client folder. So we have a bunch of um, things that are don't really have any React components or anything. So we can just like pure functions. So we can actually toast, test those. Okay, so we need a directory called tests. Uh, I think that should be within uh, the folder with the source code. I mean, that's this kind of the approach I like as well. So we can um, basically have everything in one place. And uh, does it have any naming for, yeah, okay. So it has the uh, naming convention for files. So let's say error to message test JS, right? And uh, yeah, so we just do that. Let's copy paste that stuff, um, which means, okay. So we will have some errors with ESLint. Um, I guess I would have to change rules a bit later on to allow it to uh, use test globally in those files. I mean, okay, for now, you know, I'll, I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to do that as in global test. There we go. That's that's all I need here, actually. Or was it? Uh, what was it? Wait, why, why don't you like that? Global test in... Okay, how do you define that? As in inline globals. It's like, um, sometimes I remember how to do this correctly, sometimes I don't. Um, so let's see, global. No, 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 this, yes, global variables, blah, 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 Mongo, yeah, yeah, I know that's all the presets. Ah, okay, so yeah, I don't need ESLint, I just need um, global test, right? Okay, there we go, good. So uh, what do we need to do? We need to test, we have two messages, um, login error, so let's, let's call it this way. 
and uh, I'm gonna import both of them actually here and I think we would probably need to set up the uh, Babel um, support as well because this is not uh, I mean, this is ES6, right? And and it's the import syntax is definitely not something that is supported in Node.js yet. By the way, there's been news that um, V855, which supports native async await, have been merged into Node.js master branch, which means the next update will have it, which is amazing. I also saw some um, uh, speed, um, how to say it, speed tests or performance tests, basically, and uh, that looked really, really good. All right, so what we need to test here, we need to test that if uh, status is uh, 401, right? So, um, okay, how does just works um, in terms of testing? Does it has expect, yeah, okay, expect this to be, um, and we copy that error message, right? And uh, this is test number one, and then Okay, which means we need say global expect it. There we go. And then if we say that status is zero and then um, message, then it should be message. And in this case, we say const message test error, right? So this is one, and then we do the same for register error to message, which should be trivial actually. And um, yeah, so we do that, that, and here in this case, okay, so if it's XHR, so, okay, this is gonna be a bit more complex. Um, data XHR um, response, and then, we need response. Okay, and response should have error. So this is the first, um, let's call it broken XHR data, right? So an error, test error. So that, that that's kind of trivial. Expect, um, okay, broken XHR data to be broken XHR data, XHR response error, right? So we need that test. Um, I don't care about that part. So this is one. Then we need what status. Uh, okay, so status equals uh, 403. And then the message should be whatever we have here. So just copy that stuff. Um, right. And uh, then we expect what else and then we just do the same message thing. Okay, so we actually let me let me just put that message on top of here. We can use it everywhere. So and uh, yeah, register. There we go. Um, all right. So the question is, how do I configure just to work with Babel? Is it in this article? Babel? Yeah, setting up Babel. Okay, cool. There is a package called Babel Jest. That's very convenient. Yarn odd minus minus dev. Babel Jest. Cool. Uh, we don't need anything else now. Okay, so we go to package JSON. We say that the test script is gonna be uh, just. Okay, um, what else? Coverage, watch. Yeah, I guess we can do coverage. So let's call it cover and it's gonna be just coverage. And uh, how do we set up Babel? Ah, okay, there we go. So we just say uh, just config. Um, somewhere here, I guess. Set up files and snapshot serializers. Okay, so we need this setup file. Um, eh, that is actually broken. Let's see, Babel Jest. Let's Google it. Maybe there's an easier way to set up because I saw some pretty nice um, Babel Jest, Jest repository, Jest Babel, uh, the container. Uh, the source can be found in packages Jest. Ah, okay, there you go. Okay, Babel Jest and uh, setup. The uh, setup is only required if you're using with additional code preprocessors. Okay, so we, you don't actually we don't actually need to set up anything. Um, if you're using just CLI, just start Babel Jest, it will automatically compile. Okay, so we actually need any setup, which is kind of awesome. Uh, so in theory, that should work, right? So npm test. 
and uh, just wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay, there's a ton of watchman crawl failed retrying once with a uh, node crawler. You should have when watchman isn't running. Create um, empty watchman config. Okay, let's do that. Admit no touch is what I want. And npm test. Okay, so now no warnings errors. Test should failed. Unexpected import. All right, so it obviously doesn't really work. Um, right. If you'd like to write your own blah, 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 config transform option in your to explicitly define, I guess we do need explicit definition of um, transformation, right? So this is what we want and let's give it a shot. What? We're trying once with node crawl again. That, that's, that's kind of weird. No, that doesn't seem to be working. Okay. So what what do those guys here do? Setup files. Let's let's try using the setup file. Maybe that will actually work. This this is kind of a bit annoying. Let's put me the, let's put it this way. Um. Okay. So we need a folder test and let's create a just setup JS. Yes. Let's do this and then uh, just setup console. Mount. Okay, this is an enzyme setup uh, module mapper. It's not something we need. Okay, but they don't actually set up the Babel just here in any way. So that theoretically should work. Um, right, so let's kill that. We have Babel just we have just itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I use Babel and CSS modules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Snapshot serializer. This is again enzyme. I'm not getting it. So importing. Uh, this is again enzyme. This is create element skips. This is just okay. So it seems like it should theoretically work, but um, question is why is it? Again, the watchman errors are all over the place. Um, Facebook GitHub docs troubleshooting. Let's try. Uh, okay, that and um, yeah, that's not very good impression. Please don't tell me it still sucks and I have to use something else. Um, Watchman crawl for JS taste map. Okay, let's see. I mean, I I'm imagining. I think Watchman is not a part of Node.js, so we might um, I might need to install Watchman natively or something along those lines. Mini message also warning you know, troubleshoot says nothing else install. Okay, okay, this link actually works. Uh, Watchmen. Watchmen, blah blah blah, recrawl, what are the logs, notify, open the RFS events, uh, reinstall. Yeah, may, maybe I need to do that. Um, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just. I actually don't have it installed, I think, right? So, okay, that's is uh, right. Now we only have error with Babel. Um, so why the hell? Okay, um, just Babel, let's see. What am I missing here? Um, blah, 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 Babel's environmental op. No, if you're using, oh, I guess maybe, maybe it doesn't pick up the Babel config. Is that the case? So in our case, I think we have the config in Webpack, right? Maybe I just, so I guess we have to move all of that into the, um, yeah, package JSON maybe. So that would mean uh, we have, whoops. Babel over here, and uh, in this case, yeah, this is all gonna be very ugly. So I'm gonna do cache directory true presets, ES15, React, stage zero, um, plugins, transform runtime, yes, environment, uh, development. Okay, I think. Yeah, no, that should work, right? Okay, so theoretically should be exactly the same options as per um, webpack, right? So we don't need, we don't need, oh, we don't need trading commas here. And we need one here. So, okay, now that 
No, watch phase again. What the? God damn it! I I guess it doesn't pick up config from here. That is very weird. Okay. Um. I mean, let's kill that. I am confused a bit by that. Um. So how do I? I mean, one option. No, but we need to use Jest because. Uh, otherwise, our, our I mean, all, all our source code is written in, in uh, sorry, Babel, right? Um, blah, blah, blah. So, not sure you are not test specified. Just CLI, Babel, just test, just test file extensions, script preprocessor. Okay, um, yeah, but it, it says it should pick it up on its own. So wait, how does it actually read the config? Um, Babel, yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay, maybe, 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 let me think. Maybe I'll just create dot Babel RC file. Maybe if we take the config from here and uh, put it in Babel RC. So wait, wait, let me just quickly check the Babel RC format. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's just JSON, right? So in theory, if I do that, come on, uh, yes, need that, need that that stuff, we don't need all those commas, and uh, then I need to replace um, quotes with double quotes. No, wait, come on, there we go. And I need to do that for, um, how do I do that for all, there we go, there we go. Uh, okay, I forgot the preset stuff, and uh, some trading commas here and there. Okay, npm test, please eat the config now. Right, okay, so common cause. Okay, now it doesn't like the configuration. Unknown option cache directory. I guess, okay, right. For cache directory, we don't actually, I think that's a Babel loader option. Okay, can I read property response of undefined? Okay, now it's already a test errors. Um, right, okay, because I need, um, Correct XHR, right? Um, it has to be XHR response. And then it sh that, that's it, right? I think that's all we actually need here. So, and then in this case, we need to do correct XHR. So we just expand it to um, show that there is no error there. And in theory, that should pass. Okay, so now we only have this Watchman, Watchman config, does that, does that now reliably works? Okay, that seems to have actually fixed it. Okay, cool. So we have just running with um, ES6 and everything. Uh, we had to do some things, but you know, it's not too bad. Um, I guess we can actually, yeah, no, it's fine. We don't need to test the index.js, so um, require oath.js. Right, no, wait, that should be actually test.js, right? Rename test.js. Cool. Um, okay, so let's just copy paste this stuff here. And uh, let's see. So require oath uh, from require oath. There we go. And uh, yeah, require oath. There we go. So we don't need that stuff. Now let's see what it actually does. So it takes in next state and replace, and then it imports store. Okay, so in theory, basically, if we call it, it should call the replace with, um, right, so require oath, um, no, require oath, there we go. And uh, then the first one is next state, which should have location path name, so location, um, that should be an object path name uh, test, right? And then there should be a function that takes in an object and uh, expect object uh, 
path name to be so it should be um, slash login then expect object uh, state next path name to be um, test right yeah so there we go um, in theory I mean I think the question is how does just actually handles again those boxy things okay how does just, local storage is not defined uh, right okay now we need polyfills for local storage um let me see just local storage I wonder if there's just a, some options to toggle it or something um, yeah, I mean, I know that I can mock it, but <laughs> then I pass to your file. Okay, I guess we do need some utilities here to actually uh, set up JS. Let's call it this way, and uh, yeah, let's let's just use this 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 thing here. Um, just can. Yeah, that seems to be const return get item. Can make it a bit nicer. There we go. So I think that should be sufficient, right? Yeah, okay. And then we need to do what? We need to say set up test framework. Um, that should be in package JSON, and we don't really have any just config here. So let's add one over here and uh, wait, no, and that is gonna be um, test setup JS, right? So if that documentation is not outdated, that theoretically should fix it. Uh, okay, wait, what do you don't like? Oh, okay, because I reassign, yeah, okay, that should be let, yeah, that's true. There you go, and uh, one failed. Why is it failed? Switch map is not a fu. Sorry, what? How is that not a function? Um, I do import the whole epics oath and pages store epics oath. I do import the whole RxJS, right? Oh, I think I might not. Yeah, so which means in the setup, we have to actually, um, I guess, I mean, import should work, right? RxJS, uh, so. There we go, okay, but now there are what? Parsing unexpected token U at position zero. Reducers auth um 10 what exactly happens here stored oh, okay stored user so which mean yeah okay that that's fine so it, it logs the error but it's actually passing yeah so um that's a bit ugly but i guess it will do for now so that we're, we're good I guess you know we can just comment it out so that basically we ignore this error, right? So we, we don't really care if the user is uh, parsed wrong. Man, this, this Watchman thing is really annoying. But okay, whatever. I'll try to figure it out later. Um, let's continue that. So um, let's stand this. So we got the OS test sign request. Um, yes, there we go. Sign request. West J, uh, test JS, sorry, uh, yes, there we go. Um, so we copy that stuff. We, okay, so it should be expanded request plus headers um, with local storage uh, thing. Okay, so we need first of all sign request from the sign request, there we go. Sign request request. So const request is gonna be a test value. And then basically expect uh, results to be 
Now the question is how do I compare object with just um, documentation? Yes, that's what I want. Mm, let's see, um, API docs, yes. Expect value, expect, expect a symmetric match to be, to be, is there something like deep equal? To equal, does it work? Okay, so to equal, and I guess to be should be also like deep, right? Mm, I mean, let, let's give it a shot. So it should be request plus, um, okay, const, let's, let's construct it separately, that, that will be more convenient. Const expected res, let's call it this way. So it should be rec and uh, access token. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Um, the set item and test which means here it should be test uh, no nope. there we go and here we just say expected rest and in theory that should be sufficient no, wait. okay so it doesn't do deep equals which means um, to equal maybe is that it does deep comparison. Yeah, there you go. Nice. So we just covered all the utils with tests, um, which basically proves that, you know, that stuff works. So, okay, store is boring. We can do that later. App is, yeah, let's do a um, test. So test, so, okay, uh, rename. Let's, uh, God damn it. Let's set up a testing for uh, React components, I guess. New, so app test JS. Let's call it this way. Um, yeah, let me just copy the template from something like this, I guess. So I don't really care about all of that. Uh, and I forgot to actually rename it to sign request here, which is not a good thing. There you go. Okay, and uh, here we're gonna import, what do we have here? We have app, right? So we import app from um, index here. And uh, this is gonna be test app. All right, so how do we set up the enzyme testing here? Let's have a look. So in, in case you don't know, Enzyme is Airbnb library for React testing, which is very handy and very nice, allows you to use um, quite simple API to test the pretty complex components. And you know, you can very much do anything you want. It integrates with a lot of things, but uh, you know, like Jasmine Chai and Watch, I think whatever the testing system you can find out there uh, probably works with it. It's quite popular. Um, but in this case, we're gonna use it with Jest because it provides some nice React tools. Um, so we need enzyme and we need enzyme to JSON, which is converts the enzyme wrappers for just snapshot matching, uh, which is quite nice. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yes, I know that we do snapshot testing uh, enzyme. Yeah, okay, so we need what? We need reacted on test utils, yarn odd. Okay, I guess, you know what? Let's, um, let's actually commit the odd source util. Git add test, git add Babel RC, and uh, git AU. Okay, git, let's check that we are actually, yeah, we're good. Okay, git uh, some add uh, just for unit tests, uh, add basic tests to utils. Uh, you, no, utils, there we go. Um, right, good. Uh, and now we can actually do the app testing. Um, you know what, I'm gonna close this terminal, I don't use it anyway. Okay, yarn odd dev, we need react test add-ons, we need enzyme and enzyme to JSON. So once again, this is something that I haven't actually used. So um, it's gonna be a first time for me. So if you know, if I screw up or if there are any issues, you, you know exactly why. Right, so we need that. Uh, we need just config now, right? Um, oh, and you can actually do this test watch thing, I think. So it doesn't mean it will actually rerun the whole tests on its own. If that is true, that is kind of awesome. 
let's try that. So npm test watch. Let's give it a shot. Uh, it what? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because I forgot run. Oh yeah, it does. Oh man, that is kind of great. And it's failed. Okay, up test failed. So if I say expect true, then it should. No, it should. It's still but. Uh, transition okay because the CSS module so that requires an additional config okay um, right so I guess in this case we are gonna be doing the setup files so this is we're gonna be changing the config a bit setup files and then snapshot serializers okay we need the to uh, specify the serializer for um here we go okay let's try doing npm test just to make sure that it actually works like we should have only one failed test right yeah there we go so this works um so here this is we have a setup now like okay let's rename it local storage no, I mean, I don't think we need more than one setup, right? So we can just, okay. So import complete rxjs, let's do it this way. Set up local storage. Let's just comment actually what we're doing here. And then set up enzyme. Right, um, in this case, we want all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, so imports should be moved over here, uh, import enzyme uh, stuff, or I guess stuff is a, like I'm, I tend to use the word stuff a lot, but uh, let's do it method, right? Okay, that is uh, way too many space bars. Okay, console error, here we go. Yes, we overwrite console error, set up enzymes, keep, yeah, okay, good. Um, CSS modules also in just section. Okay, so this is CSS modules. Um, this is gonna go over here. Yeah, it, that is a bit too much. I think that should be it, 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 no. Nope. There we go. Theoretically, that should be fine. Ah, and I need this identity. That is actually quite tricky. I mean, but I mean, we do use a lot of client side things in there, so. Harmony proxy flags for node four and five. Okay, we're using latest node, so that should be theoretically fine. NPM test, let's see that everything actually works. No errors, no anything. And uh, yeah, there we go. App now passes as well, so cool. Now, let's see how it render um, things to match snapshot. Okay, now the question is, how the hell do I define? Okay, shallow is global as well now. Yeah, okay, because we defined it in the uh, setup. Hello, yes, so we just app, um, I don't need that anymore. So children, okay, so app, test, app, right? And then how do I define snapshots? Uh, to match snapshots, there was a description somewhere here. Uh, snapshot testing, just snapshots are just like those old text UIs with windows and buttons made of text characters. You tell Jest that you want to be sure that it accidentally uh, just saves it to file that looks like this. Every time you change your mar markup, Jest will show you a diff and ask you to update snapshot. Okay, how do I, will it generate it uh, on its own or how does it work? I'm not completely sure I understand that. Uh, e React is not defined. I'm sorry, what? Oh, right. Um, I guess we actually have to either import React over here or just say that React is global now. I mean, that, that should be fine, right? Global React, React. There we go. Um, that still takes a ton of things to set up to actually make it work properly. Right, okay, now we have a snapshot and um, I guess there we go. So you can actually look at that and uh, 
So once we rerun it, it will just compare it against it, right? Before, which means that exactly what the article says. So before, until we change something in the component, the snapshot will stay the same, which is kind of great. So you don't ever have to write anything. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, that actually is very simple to do. Um, let's do it this way, I guess. Um, why, are you, why are you showing me errors? React must be in scope. Oh yeah. Um, I get, okay, maybe let's not do React global. Or no, nah, maybe that's fine. Or not, no, okay, let's, let's. No, I guess, I mean, we're still gonna set up the ESLint rules for, um, for files. For those files, yeah, I mean that's. I think that's a good time to edit our ESLint.rc and uh, let's see. Well, first, global. So let's see ESLint globals for specific um, files, right? That's what we want. Configuring ESLint, yes. Um, globals. There we go. Blah blah blah. Specifying global. Mm -hmm. um, no undef rule will warn, yeah, no that, no global assign rule, no line globals, yeah. So, okay, I mean, I guess we can just say that globals over here. Um, so we need what? We need test. Oh, wait, is there actually a just preset? Yeah, there is. Perfect. Uh, just true. Uh, yeah, that's a bit too much. Okay, now that should be good. Okay, uh, is there an enzyme preset? Sadly, no. Okay, I mean, yeah, fine. So we can, um, yeah, that's fine. So globals can say uh, shallow we can say, um, what did we all set up here? Uh, shallow render, render true. I mean, there should be a way to say that they, those should only be in test files, right? So and that's a bit too much and that should be fine. And then let's see, can I say, um, Specifying globals here, yeah, true false. Is it only true false? Can you say that um, window is not defined? Glob based configuration, specify rules per file. Yes, that's what I want. Uh, it's not yet supported. It's in to wish list. Yes. So is that did that make it to um, ESLint 2.0 because I mean we are running ESLint 2.0 right if, if I remember that correctly let me just quickly check uh, ESLint 3 okay so that definitely should be somewhere um, things all I've considered is an official 2.0 roadmap uh, breaking code path analysis upgrade move to um, ESLint Per file config. Um, okay, that no wait, that's one O. Oh, that is super old. Developer guide new. Um, migrating three command line and configuring. Yes, yeah, I guess this is the file that I want. Um, ESLint RC. Man, does it mean we just create? No, that that would be stupid. If we need to put the ESLint RC into each one of the uh, folders that is going to be annoying. Environments, uh, do, 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 parser options. Mm -hmm. Right, so how do I do profile config? Using configuration files, shared settings. Uh, YAML, ESLint RC. So they really suggest putting them in the, no, that, that's, that sounds root true. Okay. Extending. ESLint recommended. 
Uh, okay, extends. Yeah, I know that you can extend stuff. It's not what I want. Ignoring files and directories. Uh, I don't want to ignore them. I just want to have separate rules for them. Ah, okay, uh, something that I will figure out later, I guess. Let's just use. Um, yeah, let's just do global react thing in, in the test and uh, okay, we already have that. So we, we're good, I think. Um, okay, we're gonna have some errors here, which is fine. That is not a big deal. Okay, so we set up this and uh, we can, I guess, commit that. Get, in, get status. Okay, let's make sure that everything is fine. Get commit. Okay. Um, I, so add enzyme for react component components testing add simple app um, let's write it from capital letter app component test right That's what we want okay so what we need to do now is basically go through all of those uh, components and just set up um, nice and easy tests I guess right so let's see um, source components footer so let me just do uh, copy that stuff from app over here right so in this case yeah okay I need to delete the snapshots because this is not what we want uh, rename that into uh, footer import footer from index um, footer so what does it actually take does it takes any arguments uh, it doesn't take anything so it's just basically render it and see um, that it works essentially right there we go and then npm test ta-da so now we have a nice snapshot. Let's just make sure it looks correctly. Yeah, we have style. Yeah, it looks, looks good. Cool. Um, okay, so now we basically just take that and continue for each component. Um, tests. I mean, having stateless components is actually pretty um, awesome because we don't really need to care about any logic inside them, right? So uh, now bar test JS. Um, let's just copy that stuff. Uh, so f bar. That's the whole like one of the beautiful things about uh, Redux, right? Because you don't have to think about um, having any logic of or testing any logic within components because most of them are stateless and everything is in your store and state, which is just simple functions that are really really easy to test. All right, uh, user current. Okay, so there is actually user and current uh, props which means that we need what we need to test if the user is current and if the user isn't okay we need to first of all we need to test without the user and so we need to test this one then we need to test uh, wrapper user so in this case user has what login and I think that's all we actually use here right user login and let me check link current and the current is a URI so say current equals root so this is the very basic one and then wrapper uh, root let's rename it and then that should be wrapper uh, create so this should be create right so this should be highlighted uh, the create thing and uh, the next one should have user uh, which should be some login test cat what are you doing what what no my cat is not happy about something and then current should be a uh, profile me right um wrapper user so i think that covers all three cases uh, let me check yeah that look that looks fine right okay so let's do npm test 
and check if that actually works. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so let's see the snapshots. Uh, wait, okay, it just creates three snapshots. So this one should have... Um, can't, are you kidding me? Um, right, so the first one, this one, it's active, yes. Uh, it's this one active, style, yes. No, wait, great question. Yeah, there we go, bold, that's correct. And this one, browse, correct. okay, good. And then user should have a logged in as test, cool. So this works, perfect. Now, uh, navbar notifications. Uh, so we have a bit trickier situation here. So um, tests, right, new file, notification, test, JS. Um, let me just, yeah, that's what I want. Copy that. Uh, no, there we go. Get that. Clicking wrong buttons. Footer, navbar, there we go. Okay, so um, notification, um, I think it's just exported as notifications. Right. Okay, and uh, I don't think we actually need to, t no, it's, it will be a good idea to test all of them, right? So uh, first of all, we need to test notifications and then, yeah, I guess that would be better to create two files. So there's gonna be notifications tests. Yes, rename that. Um, I guess notifications from uh, notifications. There we go. Notifications, notifications to match snapshot. Um, do we have to pass it anything? We have to pass it notific. Okay, it connects to the store. Um, so in theory, that should actually just work, right? And there are some issues. Uh, could not find store either in context or props. Okay, I guess, uh, or pass explicitly store is a prop to connect. Okay, so we can pass a store, which means, uh, the question is what the hell does it want in the store? Um, right, uh, store, store. I'm guessing it's gonna call, Mm, okay, I mean, is there an explanation here on Redux? No, okay, just enzyme Redux. Let's, let's check that part. So this is basically the last thing. Uh, I'm gonna go through the questions and users and I think after that, I'm gonna finish the uh, live stream because the, all the other things left are quite trivial and I think I'm gonna do another live stream somewhere maybe next week to finish that up. Redux enzyme, yeah, there we go. And let's see, builds roots components, yes, that's what I wanna see, um, header. Come on, is that, no, it's, it's stateless. I mean, come on, stateless component testing is easy. Show me how you test the Announcement. Ah, there we go. Okay, this one is not connected to <laughs> Redux as well. Uh, no, that's not connected as well. Index. Ah, yes, this seems to be connected. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so how does index test it? React, yes, yes, mock announcements. Okay, those are snapshots. Uh, dispatch announcements. You just pass announcements to it. Yeah, how does it work? Announcements from announcements. No, this announcements, right? Yeah, that index. How announcements? Okay, uh, where are dispatch and announcements? And dispatch is okay. So we pass. Wait, how does that? Is there an article that actually explains that stuff? Uh, snapshot testing, Redux just background, yeah. So yeah, okay, this looks like what we need. Test in Redux. Uh, yeah, okay, I mean, test in Redux function is ridiculously simple. That's not interesting. Show me how to test components. Store, yeah, there we go. 
uh, store mock store feature component mock store where do you get that from um, configure mock store redux mock store ah, that is handy dev redux mock store let's do that uh, so we do this and the you know when you have an um, ecosystem that great for your um, packages like the redux in this case it's really cool you can just find anything you need vm packages so um our, yeah, our packages then create mock store so in this case we are gonna use um, i added the redux mock store right oh god i've yeah okay I've added it to a completely wrong base yarn and package JSON. We don't need that. Um, let me go all the way back. So yarn at there we go. Okay, mock store. Uh, there we go. Middlewares. Oh, wait, do I have to set up the middleware all like the same way again? Now that will be that will be a bit annoying. Reducer. Mm. <laughs> yeah okay i mean let's let's just try doing that uh here's the question we'll just i mean if i just pass it because i don't really care right now about the uh rendering of the stuff like as in i don't really care about the notifications themselves so i just want to see if that's actually uh store no wait eh? what um configure mock store oh um i have to actually create the store itself here right okay i missed that part and uh let's just pass it an empty object and then store there we go that is tricky a bit tricky to set up and now there's some more errors uh prop notifications is marked and required but its value is undefined um right so how do i so it passes this feature component which is an initial state and uh, so okay so if i say notifications no from the small like this is that what we want <gasps> it works yay okay awesome uh let's see a snapshot uh yeah that okay so it basically just do does the shallow rendering which is like super straightforward yeah that looks good right so now we need another test which should be notification uh test js right so this is the uh, no wait what there we go now we need to test the uh notification itself which means we import notification from here so we import notification from notification uh this is notification uh there we go okay so uh why does it oh it connects to store to be to use this patch so in this case we don't really need to path anything to it i think and then notification it should have notification property um which should notification should contain what it should have so const notification it should have ID like zero it should have uh, text 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 uh, test notification and uh, anything else no I think it doesn't alert type okay um, alert type uh, test right uh, I mean I don't really care what's gonna be written in there so okay uh and i forgot to pass it here notification there we go npm test does it work yeah it works okay let's check the snapshot notification test so we got eh, but it actually okay it uses shallow rendering uh but it does passes everything in there but wait it should actually render the div here why the hell I guess it will only expect shallow to JSON. Uh, shallow to JSON is what the hell? Time to JSON. 
wait we don't really use that right so but no okay we use that it's it's auto plugged in so but that means we are now rendering shallowly which means we don't render the notification component itself so if i run pm run cover then we probably would get a very uh, poor coverage right because we don't need really to test the internal component um is there a way to is there uh, coverage report yeah there we go that's what i want to see um where the hell did that open it now oh there we go okay uh notifications Noti yeah so as i as i was saying it doesn't actually render the internal part now how do i actually do that um snapshot testing action yeah we don't care about actions for now reducers that's easy again test gotchas connectors and selectors libraries no nothing here then testing tooling uh find item click yeah so something we don't need for now yeah we also need to test actually the click on the um, thing that would remove the remove the notification but first of all let's figure out how the hell do you render it i mean one way would be to export the um, notification from here like this and then uh we can do it wrapper and then we can just test it uh separately right whoops there you go notification wrapper and then we can import notification from here um, in this case, if, oh, I forgot the column over here, semicolon, sorry. Uh, in this case, yeah, okay, so we can move the test notification data over here, right? And in this case, we don't need store, we just need to say notification as notification it doesn't have store but it should have this on a remove notification click which is um so we can actually simulate the on click right now right because there's this button and uh which means that const on click let's call it this way so this id we should be expect id to be a notification id right so this is what we need on 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 click there we go so first we test wrapper and then we need to use this um searching where is it mm -hmm. What was it that was here there we go so we need that so ah mount okay so we need to mount it and then okay so we mount it test interact interaction mount um okay let's do it this way const component so we're gonna uh, create a component then component test it shallowly then mount it find uh, button right simulate click and uh, once it's done uh, well that is not what I want to do npm test I wonder if that works and that's uh, what is it not like um, oh is it because yeah the snapshot so I need to kill that for this snapshot to be regenerated, I guess. There we go. Wait, that actually works. That is kind of awesome. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so no, yeah, there we go. So there's a div now. Nice. That's that's just great. I mean that stuff works perfectly well okay uh, we have that tested uh, we have uh, now we need to do um, tests we just create the folders here as well um, so question test.js 
again um, notification test yeah, I'll just copy this stuff so we don't need that anymore let's see question um, we actually have a lot of interactions here and we have again wrapper and I'm gonna export that again so we can test them separately which means um, we don't need that stuff yet so question okay no question wrapper from index yes uh, question wrapper shallow render question wrapper um, do we pass anything to it um, we don't really toggle render props okay there is a ton of props here but in this case I mean if we just test shallow rendering we don't really care about that right so we just pass store and then we expect it to match a snapshot let me do this stuff because in, in the uh, dumbest case we just want to see if it actually renders everything correctly uh, it wants user from props okay user so const user uh, right what does it read from user actually id id zero do they have anything else uh, user no okay then question okay i guess we will have why, why is there actually errors here what do we don't like Question missing prop validation. Okay, we, this is something we can fix later. Const question owner. Let's make it user. Um, question. So, what else do I use? Text. Question text. Uh, text text. Uh, owner ID owner login. So test answers answers there you go so answers is an array and each answer has what answer answer um, answer test uh, no wait, test answer right uh, answers answers uh, text owner ID yeah that looks good and then there are three actions. I don't know if we need them, so let's try that user user question question right. Let's see. And there are some more errors. So uh, read property user of undefined. Oh, I guess we need to user and uh, question. Oh, right, because we don't actually need to pass them here as properties. This should be a part of the store, right? I think they are mapped from uh, user state user and then prop user question okay where is the question is not coming from the store that is a bit weird I guess no and it's not I guess okay so it means it should be like this right am I doing this correct we don't like now we can read user of undefined uh, you want both of them there and there it's, it's a bit confusing um up state to props okay um oh because of god damn it of course i am forgetting that we have we have a sub elements of the store yeah right there we go so let's have a look at the snapshot so theoretically yeah nice okay so now it actually passes everything cool now we have to uh render the question itself right so um we have what we have uh three actions on answer delete question update question const on answer i'm gonna just do it no op functions for now and then we can edit them to uh, do whatever here we go uh, so this should be question uh, user is our user question is our question 
then uh, on answer is on answer uh, delete question is delete question and update question is update question and I guess it's gonna be better to just do this right so we shallow uh, render it match it to the um, test rendering it's still too long right so I'm gonna do it this way Let's do it like this yeah there we go much better uh, what are you complaining again no trading spaces there you go no trading spaces all right and then we mount it uh, then we need to test interactions okay on answer so on answer handle answer click this is what we want handle answer click is we find button okay is there only one button no there's not no okay it's editing editing we don't care about for now so we find button we click it which means it it triggers this handle answer click <clears throat> sorry about that um so we what question okay so it should receive question and answer input value okay so first of all then let's see um question and answer and uh, expect question to equal question right expect answer to be um, answer so and then it const answer so test answer what we need to do is we need to um, click answer button set answer so const input app find I think there is only one input here actually um, answer input okay we can actually find it by ID right so we can find answer input input value um, answer and that theoretically should work right uh yeah so what do you question is already declared answer is already good. yes that's fine um i forgot this here question um i mean let's say q and a expect q yeah okay that that, that makes more sense and pm test let's see that actually should work simulate is only meant to run a single node okay we actually found three buttons which is not something we want uh let's add ids i guess answer button because we want it to be testable right there we go so uh okay yeah and now we have to actually kill the snapshot we run that, we generate the snapshot. Okay, can read property props of undefined handle, answer, click. Um, handle, answer, click. This props, wait, what? Handle, answer, click, why? Oh, um, of course, I am, um, how did it work before? That is, that is a good question. <laughs> uh prevent default of undefined okay now i don't pass event to it um there we go and uh, now that should finally work correctly test answer to be okay uh now the question is can i so just uh find no wait that's not just right because we're using the um mount thing from enzyme enzyme mount let's see uh, what kind of api do they actually provide uh wrapper set props so i guess that's what we want uh is, no is the mount node find filter where it contains is exist children parents render text html get 
uh, get DOM node. I mean, I guess we can do get DOM node, set prop, set con. So this is the React thing. Um, map reduce every, yeah, I guess so we need get DOM node and then um, mm -hmm. get DOM node, right? And then we set the value of DOM node to answer and that should theoretically, yeah, there you go. Cool, so now we tested the answer. Um, so test answer. Now we need to what test, uh, what was the other um, delete? So, but before we can delete, we actually, and, uh, we need to, we need to what? We need to toggle edit thing, right? No, wait, that is a different thing, not wait, wait, wait. this. Ha no, okay, cool. So, um, and uh, yeah, again, this stuff. So how did that work before? Handle delete question. Okay, so um, I guess I need to add ID again. ID delete button. Uh, so const. Uh, yeah, let's, you know what, need to rename it, answer button, delete button, uh, app find, delete button, delete button, A, 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 come on, button, simulate click, there we go. And uh, in this case, if we see here, it should delete question, this props question. Okay, so delete question function will receive a queue, which means it should be expect queue to equal question, right? So that's basically all we need to um, have here. Let's see. And yeah, okay, it's gonna fail because of the snapshot. So I'm gonna kill the snapshot again, test again. So now the snapshot should be regenerated. There we go, that works, cool. Okay, and the last one we need to test is update question. But to test the update question, I think, yeah. So we need to actually click the edit button um, editing, yeah, so in this, uh, again, I need to add ID, edit button. So, test update, so app, I guess we can just do it like this. Uh, simulate, click, right, so we enable editing. After that, we need to say we need to, um, Yeah, again, ID uh, question text. Let's do it this way. So app find question text, const q text. There we go. Uh, so q text get dom node value change it text. There we go. And after that, we need to click uh, this button again, ID update button, right? So con up find, yeah, I guess we can just do it again, simulate, click. Maybe we can also uh, shorten those things because I mean, we don't really care about the references to those buttons, right? So we can just simulate the click and that's it and be done with it. Um, yes, yes, there we go. Okay, and uh, yes, here as well. We don't really care about maintaining the reference to that. Okay, um, so enable editing. Uh, yeah, so we say same can be done here. Um, right, change um, question text update, trigger update, okay. And then update question. So basically here it should get a new question, which 
means expect q. Uh, okay, let's see how it actually works. So we need new, so it emits owner and answers, which means we just need to, to check text. Text, expect text to be updated text. Let's just create a variable for that. Const updated text, updated text. Let's just do it this way. And uh, yeah, let's uh, put it here. And uh, now we need to kill a snapshot again because it's gonna change due to our IDs changes and npm test. Does that actually work? No, it doesn't. Uh, updated text, question text. So I have missed something. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Get DOM note. There we go. Uh, try that again. Yeah, it works. Perfect. Man, that is awesome. I mean, that is actually way easier than I expected it to be. Uh, all right. And I think the only thing left to test is this one. Um, export. So we got question test. Um, file user test JS. So I'm gonna copy this part here. We're gonna insert it over here. Uh, I don't, do we actually need to pass something user edit, update user? Okay, there are some things. Uh, we don't actually need that console lock over here. All right, so we update user. So we do this patch thing. Uh, again, we can test um, a user wrapper. Then that is going to be user mock store. So we need a user. We don't really care about question thing, user wrapper. Uh, so what does it bind to? It actually doesn't get anything from the um, store aside from the dispatch method. So we can just create a dummy store with, no, with an empty object. So user should be user, store, store. That's it. Um, let me just command all of this stuff actually need so test rendering test answer so we can leave one of them here because we have one action there I think and uh, npm test nice nice very nice okay so it works it renders the user uh, wrapper which means now we can actually do the user thing uh, we don't really need that stuff now so user, 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 yes. And uh, what else does it take us uh, edit and update? Okay. Um, so edit is what? Edit is a Boolean which allows us to edit user, which means if we want to test update, it has to be true. And uh, update user is a function that is, uh, yeah, so update user which means new user okay in this case we can just say expect new user um, but it only changes the login right so we can just actually extract login from here say login to be new login and we need to create this new login thing a new login, let's go this way. Okay, uh, that is wrong, there we go. Uh, yeah, okay, it's actually broken because of that, there we go. Right, uh, edit, what? Omit it, okay, I mean, we can omit that, I don't mind, so like this, right? Uh, wrapper, so we retest the uh, shallow rendering, then we test the interaction, test user update. Yeah, I guess we can just do it like this. Uh, set new username. Uh, okay, we need to actually update the input ID user uh, login input, right? So, which means like this, uh, new login. And we need to, uh, is there only one button here? Yeah, there is only one button, so we can actually do that. Uh, but we need to kill the snapshot anyway, because 
we won't be able to test it. So npm test, that theoretically should work. Yeah, there we go. So we have tests for all the components now with, um, I mean, npm run cover, let's see the coverage actually. Uh, yeah, there we go. Hey, what? Notification wrapper and uh, registration date. Okay, oh yeah, okay, I guess. User wrapper. Wait, how does that delete that stuff? Um, test again. Okay, so test passes. Let's run it again. Okay, so the user test fails because snapshot has registration date, which means uh, I have to probably provide it myself. Otherwise, it will. Okay, registration date. Yeah, so registration date, uh, new date. Okay, um, DN date, how do I, what would be the best way to specify that? Uh, yes, there we go. Mm, value year, months, date, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. Okay, so let's just specify something like 2016. One, one, uh, one, one, one yes this is going to be a very complicated date okay so in this way if we kill the snapshot again and rerun test twice it should be the same right so test test there we go one more time just to be sure right cool um npm run cover let's run the coverage why wait what why does it not match a snapshot when you run coverage uh, alrighty then why the hell did that happen and that that's actually very confusing so Wait, but some of them passed now. What the f um, Right, that is a bit confusing. Component user, okay, let me see. So if we take user wrapper, yeah. User, no, it should be user, right? It's like, why is it component somewhere? No, it's consistent. So it, it happens all the time, but only for some of them. Um, so just cover um, snapshot component error. Um, coverage flag break. Yeah, there you go. It definitely seems like a bug. Received snapshot and static function anonymous. Uh, yeah, this is Istanbul. Okay. Um, will be fixed in 16. I can. Okay, that seems like a box. I'll just. Whatever. I'll just one touch it. Okay, cool. Git. Okay, we can ignore coverage actually. Git commit minus m add unit tests for components. And I got delivery. Okay, um, it's a good point to stop here. So thank you all for watching and uh, see you around.